You know what we need to do. We need to go pee to the chipmunk, don't we? <laughs> In GarageBand, there are 10 free stock plugins that we can use to enhance our songs. And in this video, we're going to go through all 10 of them. So to add a plugin to any track that we have here in any project, it's as simple as going to the top here, to our little mixer icon, to tapping on plugins and EQ, hitting the edit button, and then anywhere we've got one of these green plus buttons, hitting that and hitting any of these 10 effects. And yes, you can download audio unit extensions. You can use the other Apple audio extensions. And there's a heap of video here on the channel that will show you all about those and how to install third-party plugins. But before you go and do that, it's important to check out these ones because there's a lot of cool stuff hidden in here. So let's go through these from top to bottom one by one and see what they all do. So number one effect is a bit crusher. So this one's going to be used in certain situations. Now for this project here, I've, uh, I've got this shout. So what I've done is I've removed a lot of the processing and plugins from this project so that we can check out these different plugins. So this track here, if we solo it, this is me just yelling. Uh, so let's uh, take a listen to what that sounds like now without any effects. So that's kind of okay, but it, it needs some processing. Yeah, and I thought a bit crusher might be a good one to use on this one. And what a bit crusher does is it actually down samples the sound. So if you know about uh, bit rates, you can reduce the bit rate to make it sound sort of more crunchy and old school. So let's throw the bit crusher on here. This is a pretty simple one. You've got your resolution here. You can start at 24 bit, which is the resolution that GarageBand records in. You can drop it down anywhere down to 8 bit which will give you a pretty crushed sound, 4-bit, all the way down to 1-bit sound. So let's use 8-bit for the example here on this bit crusher. And there's how much downsampling you can do. So you can do anything from 1x all the way up to 40x. So let's just do this at, uh, say, the three times, which is the default. And uh, we'll turn it down a bit because bit crusher can be a bit harsh. Let's see what this does to this shout. <laughs> So you can hear how you get that kind of breakup kind of sound there. If we increase the amount of downsampling that we do here, let's make this like 10 times. Now take a listen. <laughs> now we've got that creature from the deep there. And again, if we drop the resolution right down here, let's go right down to a 4-bit sound and take a listen to this. Yeah, maybe not. So you can see that you can very quickly go overboard and over the top with this. So I reckon around about there is going to give us a little bit of a crunchiness with this one. There you go. Uh, so that's uh, that's going to work on that particular raw. We'll use some other effects uh, to, la to layer these up because don't forget you can use multiple effects as you go through. The next effect that we're going to look at here on the Apple list is the chorus effect. Now chorus can be used on a bunch of things, but where chorus loves to live is on guitar. So let's find uh, our guitar here. We've got two guitars. We've, well, actually, we've got three. We've got a lead, we've got a low riff, and we've got some chuggers. So I'm going to use the lead guitar because lead guitar and chorus go together like a chips and gravy. <laughs> so we're going to try this one. Now this time, you can see here, we've already used up all of our slots because we're using the guitar amp here. So we are going to have to sacrifice this wider plugin that we were using before. We can now hit the plus button here and we can add some chorus. So if we turn it off, let's just listen to what this sounds like out of the box. <laughs> So there is already a little bit of processing, and that's actually coming from this guitar amp sim. So I've already used some pedals here, which you can do. You can use these in conjunction with each other if you want to. So you can add chorus here in the pedals, or you can add it here. So we're going to add it in this one here now. And you can see with the chorus, you've got a mix percentage here. You've then got your intensity and your rate. So the intensity is how much chorus is going to be applied, and the rate is basically the speed of those warble sounds you get with a chorus. So let's turn the mix up just so that we're really going to be able to hear it and uh, play this with a little bit of chorus. Pretty cool, yeah. So we can then up the intensity if we want like more of a chorus sound on this guitar. <laughs> a little haunted house kind of style. And then the rate is going to increase that speed. It's going to do something like this. 
yeah, not really what we're looking for. So we want a little bit less. We want the intensity around maybe there and then our rate just over that one, just to give it that little warbly effect. Let's take a listen. Sweet. So there's our chorus. That's our second effect here in GarageBand. Let's move on to effect number three. Let's find another track that we may want to process with our third effect. If we come in here, edit, hit the plus button on this one, it's distortion. And yeah, do we need some distortion. So this shout that we used before, we're going to distort this sucker up. So let's grab the distortion here. Distortion has drive, tone, and output here. So if we come back here and we hit on this one, let's take a listen to this shout that we heard before with now the bit crusher and this default distortion dialed in. Uh, you might want to block the ears of anyone sensitive nearby. There you go. And if we remove that bit crusher and hear this with just the distortion so we can hear just that sound, let's take a listen. Cool, but maybe we need a bit more. Let's up this drive and give ourselves a little bit more distortion. That's more like it. And uh, now you can actually change the tone here as well. So if you want sort of more of a, uh, a higher tone, we can up it there and the distortion will come on the higher end. <laughs> That's a bit scary. Or we can bring it really guttural. Let's like bring it down to like 300 hertz and you're going to get a real low down kind of distortion like this. <laughs> So I think we need it somewhere in between. I've never done so many roars in one video before. So we'll drop the drive down, yeah, maybe about eight there, and uh, and we'll go with that. So that's your distortion plugin. Another cool thing to use distortion on is actually your drums, believe it or not. So drums can sound a little bit clean out of the box here in GarageBand like this. If you throw a little distortion on there, not that much, and then bring this up a bit, Hear how that just makes them kick through a bit more? Yeah, so try your distortion on different things and it can even work well for regular vocals just to add a little bit of, just rub them in the dirt a bit because sometimes things can sound a little bit too clean. Speaking of vocals, let's uh, use this vocal line for our next effect. So we'll come in here once again, we'll hit the plus, we'll go into our flanger and yeah, Flanger is more at home on guitar, but we're going to use it on vocals just for fun here. So let's listen to this vocal as it stands without the flanger. Sounds like this. The devil made me do it. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll just turn the compressor on there, actually, so that we can hear that vocal a little bit better. The devil made me do it. He didn't have a there you go. So we'll grab this flanger and we'll turn this one on. Just with its default settings, it's probably going to sound a bit wacky. Devil made me do it. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. Cool, right? So again, with our flanger, we've got similar controls here. You've got your mix, you've got your intensity, you've got your rate, and you've got this time your level of feedback. So you can adjust all of those. It's similar to the chorus effect. You can play around with those to your heart's content and get some cool sounds. Devil made me do it. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. So I'm going to go with around about that mark there on the flanger. And again, you can use flanger on guitars. You can use them on all sorts of different instruments. Let's grab our next effect here. We'll hit the plus button. We'll go to the micro phaser. Now let's use the micro phaser on a guitar. This time we're going to use the uh, low riff of our guitar here, which is doing this kind of work here. It does this. There you go. So we definitely need something on this one. So let's try this micro phaser to see if that's going to make this one sound interesting. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm wondering why that was sounding uh, not why. It's because it doesn't have its tone bridge on there. It doesn't have its amp sim. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure I had an amp sim on here. So let's turn tone bridge back on and there we go. But what I'll actually do is I'll leave that off for now so that we can actually hear the effect of this micro phaser a little better. So let's hit micro phaser on this one. This time you've got your low frequency oscillator here, the rate of this one that you can play with, feedback and intensity. So you can see these are pretty simple. They're pretty easy to use and uh, you're gonna be able to just experiment with these. Let's uh, give this one a play. So you get a similar sort of sound to that flanger and it actually works really well with the distortion of an amp.
Can you hear how it's actually creating like a stereo microphasing effect? It's really cool and it works really well on guitars. Try it on your organs, try it on your keys, your pads. It's a great little plug-in there. Let's move on to our next plug-in, shall we? Uh, why don't we try it on these guitar chuggers? Because the next one here is our overdrive, which is similar to distortion, but a little bit of a cleaner sound. So if you just want more of that overdriven tone, you can use overdrive. Now we'll turn it off for now because we're already using tone bridge. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like. Let's just bring this into the center so we can hear it better. So there's a little guitar loop doing its chugger chuggers, and uh, that's it with the tone bridge on there. If we turn that off, it's going to be like this. And if we want to manually overdrive it, we can use the overdrive plugin. And the beauty of these is that you get very simple and very complete control over the tone. So what frequency you want the tone to drive at and then how much drive you want. So let's put maybe, you know, 7 dB of drive on here around 1 kilohertz, 1000 hertz, and uh, take a listen to what this is going to sound like on our chuggers. So it just gives you that subtle drive. And then as we turn it up, and if we want more of like a high end sound, so you can just enhance the bits that you actually want to enhance in there. And then if you wanted to, say, you drop the output of this down a little bit and bring your tone bridge back in. You can create yourself a pretty interesting sounding tone. Probably doesn't work with that one, with that conjunction, but your overdrive is good. And the other thing I want to uh, direct your overdrive attention to is vocals, because overdrive sounds really good. It's it's a it's a tip for for vocals. If your vocals are not sound uh, sounding a little bit too kind of clean like this, or just solo that one, they're sounding a bit clean. Never made me do it. He didn't have a chance. Let's um, throw some uh, overdrive on this. A little bit of drive on your vocals, probably only about 2 or 3 dB. It can just rough it up a bit. The devil made me do it. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. So if you're finding, uh, like in, in digital recording, quite often your vocals can sound super dry and uh, a little bit too clean. So sometimes just rubbing it in the dirt can actually really help with that sound. Let's move on to our next one. We've got a heap of stock plugins in here. Track Echo and Track Reverb are both very cool to use. So you can use Master Echo and Master Reverb. We've showed those in other videos. The track versions actually give you a whole lot more control over that echo and reverb. So let's use the echo here on this vocal. Devil may, Devil may, may do, it. do it. He didn't have he a chance. And the cool thing about these ones is that you can actually dial in the actual notes that you want and it will sync up to the tempo of your track. So if you wanted to do it, say a quarter note that we have there, but if you wanted like a really quick slap back that's right on that 16th note, you can dial that in too. Devil made me do it. He didn't have a chance. And you kind of sound like a horror movie there. So you can do that and you can do it in triplets. You can do it however you want. Or you can even do like a half note here to do it like on the on the uh, second beats. The devil made me do it. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. I kind of like that one. So we'll go with that one for this. And again, this is great for lead guitars. It's great for organs and all sorts of other stuff. The difference with this one is you can use this as a wet or a dry. So you can actually just dial in how much of this you want. So if we go with, say, 90% wet and 10% dry, uh, other way around, 90% dry, 10% wet. The devil made me do it. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. You just get that little uh, little bit there. Now, you've also got repeat and color here. They do some slightly different things. There's a full video all about track echo where I'd explain those in details, which you can check out here on the channel as well. Let's go over to reverb, shall we? Why don't we use the lead guitar here to show off our reverb, although we're going to run out of spots, aren't we? What can we use instead? Uh, what if we use the drums? Because a bit of reverb on some drums always sounds pretty kick-ass. So let's come in here, hit the plus button, go to track reverb, and uh, add this to our drums. Here's the drums without the reverb. Let's add it in. And you'll notice there that, um, yeah, it, it gives you that stereo spread with your reverb. So that's another thing you have. You can have the time here. So if you want a really long reverb, you can add it there. And you can increase, again, the dry and wetness of that. So if we come in here and take a listen to it again... There's a lot that you can play around with. And again, you'd probably not want to add as much. The default settings on these uh, these ones, 
it's probably why people don't use the stock plugins a lot because they're like, no, it's, it's too extreme because they're kind of set to show you how they work. But once you actually play around with them, you can actually get quite a subtle effect like this. So you can just hear it just sitting there in the background. Very, very cool stuff. We've only got two plugins to go here. They are still pretty cool ones. So if we hit the edit button again and hit the plus button here, we have the tremolo. I'm going to add tremolo to my bass. So yeah, we have this nice bass loop here that's doing this. And what does Trebolo do? Well, it does something interesting. It usually is reducing and increasing the volume. In this case, we've also got some stereo phasing that we can do here. So to start with, we'll, uh, we'll turn the stereo phase down so you can hear just the regular Trebolo that's gonna kind of bring the volume up and down. It sounds like this. So you can hear there just doing that and you can change the rate by dropping this up and down so if you want it to be sort of faster or slower kind of tremolo you can change this and then your depth control is going to change the depth of the tremolo So that's how much volume will duck down every time that tremolo kicks in. The stereo phase is where it's at though, because this is what creates that cool kind of come as you are stereo phasing effect you get with a tremolo like this. Now you can go overboard with that. If you're listening on stereo speakers or headphones, you'll hear that bouncing between the two ears and it will be doing it quite quickly because we've got the rate up there at the moment. But if you set your rate, if you play around with your rate and your stereo phase, you can actually get some pretty killer effects here on things like basses. Cool, yeah. All right, one final one to go. Let's come back over to our vocals, shall we, for the final effect. It's the final countdown. So we've already got tremolo on this. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. Come to our vocal. <laughs> We're going to have to make some decisions here. So uh, let's remove the, the flanger because I like all the other ones a bit better. And we'll add in the vocal transformer, which is a bit of a fun one. You're not going to use this a whole lot. But if, uh, if you wanted to change your vocal here, there's two sets here. There's the, pre, uh, the pitch, which can go up to two uh, octaves, which is 24 semitones, or down two octaves. Now, because this wants to be a bit of a guttural sort of song, we're going to go down to bring this down a whole octave. Let's see what I sound like uh, down an octave on this vocal. Devil made me do it. He didn't have a chance. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. And you can play around with the formant, which is kind of like the tonal quality of the vocal here. So let's just experiment with this. <laughs> Very fun. So you've got some options there to adjust your pitch. You know what we need to do. We need to go Peter the Chipmunk, don't we? <laughs> so will you use the vocal transformer a whole lot? Probably not, but it's there and it can be used to create some cool vocal effects. One thing that I do sometimes use it for is to double up my vocals, so to duplicate out one vocal and then add another one up or down a whole octave. It's, uh, it's a bit of fun to do. So there you go. There are 10 stock plugins that you can use in GarageBand iOS on your iPhone or your iPad for free right now. Play with them, learn them, and then if you find some gaps of things you need, by all means, you can go out and grab yourself some third-party plugins, but make sure you experiment with the stuff you get for free and see what it can do.